What's up, YouTube? Back at you with another video. We're here with the Miles Teller cast as John Branca, Michael Jackson biopic news update, whatever. And basically, there's been some controversy and, in, in, you know, debate, debacle, whatever you want to call it, that was brought to my attention that basically I'm going to discuss in this video. Um, if you want me to talk about or if you want to hear my thoughts on the Nia Long and Coleman Domingo casting as Joe and Catherine Jackson, let me know in the comment section below and I will talk about that in a separate video. But this one in particular, I kind of really want to, you know, touch on a lot of the stuff that I've been seeing in the last 24 hours. So without further ado, let's get into it. So we've got an article courtesy of the rap.com which says Miles Teller to play Michael Jackson attorney John Branca in biopic. The article goes on to say that Miles Teller has joined the cast of the Michael Jackson biopic Michael in the role of John Branca, Jackson's high-powered attorney who helped shepherd his career from <laughs> who helped shepherd his career from boy band member to king of pop. Antoine Fuqua is directing the film from a screenplay by John Logan, you know, blah, blah, blah. Says Branca was hired by Jackson after he fired his father, Joe Jackson, as manager. Branca helped the pop star purchase ATV Music Publishing in 1985 for $47.5 million, which held the copyrights to songs from the Beatles. Branca was with Jackson up through his death and served as the executor of his will. Uh, Branca also serves as a producer on Michael alongside John McClain as co-executors of Jackson's estate. Um, and I guess he said, or Antoine Fuqua said about Miles, Miles finally, or Miles' finely tuned skills as an actor are up to the challenge of playing a man who is being examined for the pivotal role he played in Michael Jackson's life, Fuqua said in a statement. He is the perfect actor to disappear into the role of John Branca. So, I'm going to give my thoughts on this casting first, and then I'm going to get into what the issue is afterward, or other people's issues, and then I'll talk about that. So, um, I mainly know Miles Teller from Top Gun Maverick and the Divergent films, and I enjoyed his characters in both of those films. So, when I heard that he was going to be cast in the Michael Jackson biopic. I mean, I, I was, I was happy about it because I said that that just, you know, lends itself to how good, or at least like the performances of this film. So when you have certain actors in there, the acting is not going to be what you complain about. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not worried about miles Teller. I know he's going to, you know, do a great job in the role and he's going to do his thing. Now, what I've kind of caught wind of, and I understand where some people are coming from, in a sense that Miles Teller, the trajectory of his career as of right now, he's moving into a space where he's going to be, I guess you could say like maybe leading man roles, I don't know, but basically with his popularity, it's assumed that his role is going to be very significant in this film. Because in, in fact... When I saw Miles Teller, I thought he was going to be Tom Mesereau. That's what I thought. I was like, I could see him with the glasses and in, in, a, in a wig and portraying, you know, a serious role like that. But for him to be John Branca, that's a different story. Now, how significant John Branca was to Michael Jackson's success? The answer to that question depends on who you ask. You know, in my opinion, Michael Jackson's attorney could have been anybody in my opinion, and his career would have been just the same. Like, it's not like, you know, John Branca is the only one who could have secured the deal to, to get the ATV publishing. In fact, it wasn't even his idea. Michael was the one that wanted to, you know, expand his business enterprise and move over into, you know, publishing and then ownership. That wasn't Mike, uh, uh, John Branca's idea so it's not like John was the one that was telling Michael oh why don't you do this why don't you do that that didn't come from him Michael was the one that picked up the phone and said all right I want to own you know this catalog this catalog this catalog get it done so John Branca was not the mastermind behind 
Michael's career. In fact, really all he was there to do was Michael Jackson's bidding. And the reason why he hired him was because he wasn't able to do that underneath his father. So he hired somebody that was going to do what he told them to do, you know? So, um, so I hope that they don't overplay John Branca's significance in his career. Like, I don't want them to act like, you know, he was responsible for his success because again in my opinion that could have just easily happened to anybody just get a good lawyer get a get a good attorney whatever and then you paying them six seven figures they gonna do their job you know what i'm saying so i, I you know that that's just my thing because in top gun maverick miles teller was he played a significant role in that film he wasn't the main character obviously that was tom cruise but the character of rooster was like an integral point in that film because a lot of the conflict in that movie really was between Tom Cruise and Miles Teller. So I see why people are worried about Miles Teller being in this movie because then it's going to be like the Michael Jackson biopic and then like they said it was like what, what, what did they say in this article? That yeah it says Jackson's high powered attorney who helped shepherd his career from boy band member to king of pop. I don't think that's accurate in my opinion i think he helped michael jackson's career absolutely and he was good at his job but michael was going to do all of that regardless okay because let's say when you know michael actually sat down with john brinker the first time and when they had their first meeting and you know he talked about you know the the prospect or notion of him being hired to be his attorney if michael felt like John couldn't do the job, he would have went and got somebody else. And then we would have still gotten off the wall. We would have still gotten Thriller, okay? John Branca not being there wouldn't have stopped the conversation that he had with Paul McCartney about publishing, which was the impetus for him getting into that business in the first place. So, and, and, and not to, again, like, not to bash John Branca or none of that. I'm just keeping it real because I'm a Michael Jackson fan first. You know what I'm saying? Like, first and foremost, and only. I'm not a fan of John Branca. I'm a fan of Michael Jackson. That career, Michael Jackson's career would have happened, and it would have went that way with or without him. That's what I'm saying. And the Michael Jackson biopic needs to reflect that, okay? I don't want them to really be diving into that relationship all that much, because that's not what the biopic is about. You get what I'm saying? And I'm saying this before I'm even reading any of people's side opinions and the controversy and none of that. Like, this is just my personal unbiased opinion. This is just how I feel. John Breaker needs to take a back seat. You could be in the movie, but you're an NPC. You're a supporting character. So I don't want, you know, um, I don't want him to be a prominent figure because in the grand scheme of Michael Jackson's story, in the grand scheme of his career, you're not all that integral. I, 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 he was an integral part of certain business aspects, but his life, his career on stage, his career behind, his life behind closed doors, John, come on, man, like, nah, nah. So I understand why people, you know, feel a way about that because it's like, you don't have a Michael Jackson's biopic and then you put Will Smith in there. <gasps> we already know when you put Will Smith in a movie, Will Smith is going to be the main character. So that's like Suicide Squad, for instance. Suicide Squad was an ensemble cast, but Will Smith was the main character as Deadshot. So when you take a leading man and you put him in a movie like that, that means his character in some way, shape or form most likely is going to be at the forefront. It is rare that you have, you know, a leading man uh, take a backseat to the story in and itself. And I'm pretty sure Miles Teller is the type of guy that would be there to serve the story. And maybe he is a fan of Michael Jackson where he's willing to do that, but we won't really know until the movie comes out. You know, but like an example of that was Leonardo DiCaprio in Django. Leonardo DiCaprio is was the star of his movies his whole life. All right. And then for once, he took a back seat to be a part of Quentin Tarantino's story. 
you know but even then he was still the villain he was still a, a big integral part of that so that's why it's like even though he might not have miles teller might not have top billing but you know he might be at the forefront and i'm not sure how like necessary that is because like i said in all my videos thus far i didn't mention john branca not one time as it relates to the story of michael jackson especially my very first video where i talked about the michael jackson biopic for almost 40 minutes you know like 45 minutes or some shit like that i didn't mention john branca at all because again he's like an afterthought the movie is supposed to be about michael jackson in the studio michael jackson at home michael jackson on stage michael jackson you know in the courtroom michael jackson in the lives of fans michael jackson in the lives of his kids all of that okay if 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 scenes are going to take place between John Branca and, and Michael, backseat stuff. Because again, it's not it's not important. Because like I said, I want people to walk out of the theater with a better understanding of who Michael Jackson was. And I don't really need John Branca in order to do that. You know what I'm saying? I don't need him for that. Like he's not all that necessary. So, you know, I, I can go on and on about that. So again, you know, in short, in closing, as far as my opinions on the biopic, I think Miles Teller is a great actor. I think he's going to kill it in this film. But they don't need to harp on their business relationship or over sensationalize their, you know, how should I say, their personal relationship. Because again, it's not about John Branca. This movie is not about John Branca. This is about Michael Jackson, the man the musician, the artist, the fucking legend. That's what this movie's about, God damn it! And they better get that shit right. Facts. I'm tired of this shit, y'all. I'm like, yo, literally, I, I'm at the point now where I want them to knock this shit out of the motherfucking park, bro. For real. For real. Like, in, in like the top 10 fans who want to see this film, I'm in the top 10, you know, who, who really wants this film to do well. I want this film to kill it. You know, and I don't want them to, you know, deviate from the purpose of this film. Because this is to tell Michael Jackson's story. This is for him. This is not for nobody else but him. And we're only going to get one shot at this. We're only going to get one shot at this. The way the film industry works right now, if a film comes out and they put $100 million into it and it flops either critically or commercially, we're never going to get this again. And like I said in the first place, freaking we're never going to live this down so if this movie is trash then us fans we're going to have to defend michael jackson like we always have all right but maybe if they if they do it right we don't have to defend and we could just celebrate we can enjoy this shit that's what i want for all of us as michael jackson fans is to enjoy this shit that's what i want to go to the film i want the movie to be so good that that us fans we're gonna want to see the movie two times three times you know what i'm saying and then that's how that movie is going to be a success if they knock that shit out of the park but john branca is not is not an integral part you could be a part of the story fine show show the genius of michael jackson as a businessman as a businessman but these two they weren't best friends they just had a they had a working relationship so he might have got married, Michael came through to the wedding and all of that, great. But don't overdo it. Don't overplay it, okay? Because I know, we know, you see what I'm saying? So that's in closing, you know, my thoughts on that. Now, I want to, I really want to take a look at some of the links that I've been sent um, where I asked for somebody to basically explain to me what's going on because I didn't understand why people are saying that they want to boycott the the biopic so um i'm gonna start with this link here yep so someone had the same issue that i said so someone was like they're already saying michael jackson was the sheep and branca was a shepherd that is incorrect okay that is incorrect because like i said john branca had nothing to do with thriller the 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 artistry the creativity the execution the musicianship the writing the music videos he had nothing to do with it that man had nothing to do with it all right no shade but all truth all facts he had nothing to do with it um now we got 
Uh, someone said, hold on, let me see. She said, I hold any attempt to whitewash Michael Jackson's hard earned black accomplishments in utter contempt. If this biopic dares to insinuate that Branka was responsible for even one iota of Michael's success, it can get in the bin with the rest of the trash with an extra soil scoop. Hey, I agree. I agree. I, I ain't mad at that. I ain't mad at that. It's, just, it's the truth. It's the truth. Now, I don't think people should not see the film. You know, I don't think people should not see it. But let me let me let me tell you all something real quick. You know, I'm an authentic Michael Jackson fan and I'm, I'm a real nigga. OK, I, I've been a Michael Jackson fan since I was five years old. When I make these videos, and I'm not even just these, but my whole channel in general, my channel does not exist to be the channel that, you know, everybody agrees with. I'm not here to be the guy that everybody agrees with. People are allowed to have reservations. People are allowed to have concerns. Just because somebody's like, yeah, you know, I'm not sure about that doesn't mean that they're like, oh, come on, man, you're supposed to be happy about this. No, I'm allowed to, to be concerned because I want the best for this film. You know, I like I just because I had reservations about the casting of a Latino boy instead of a black kid, people are like, oh, you, 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 like, come on, man. Like, I didn't say the movie was going to be trash. I just said, yo, he should have been black. That's it. That's it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But anyway, let, let's continue. Let's continue. Let's continue. Um, Someone says, I need to say it. Who, who, who the fuck? John Branca think he is to even appear on a Michael Jackson movie. And not only that, they cast the a A-list actor to portray him. It's kind of sus. I'm not going to lie. It's kind of sus. They were supposed to get, you know, I mean, look, look, if, if you're going to, if you're going to do a Michael Jackson biopic, obviously you're going to want to get the best talent. So let me, let me play devil's advocate in that aspect, but it is kind of sus. Okay. That's like him getting Leonardo DiCaprio to play John Branca. You're going to be like, yo, like, isn't that kind of overdoing it on an NPC side character in terms of Michael Jackson's story? So I, again, these are legitimate criticisms that people are having because we want it to be about Michael, not nobody else. The title of the movie is Michael, not John. This is not the John biopic. This is not, it's not called Branca. It's called Michael. Okay. So so miles teller is there but i hope like i said they they keep it within the parameters of what his role in michael jackson's life actually was and it was a business relationship okay let's continue portraying him doing the fuck what in the background handling some papers see yeah he said the movie's called michael not ego maniac all right see i, I don't know nothing about that <laughs> you know because like i said like you know i don't know i mean y'all tell me in the comment section why John Breaker is an egomaniac, and you know we we could talk about it, but um, it's all va all, all valid, you know reasons, all valid issues people are having right now, you know, to me personally, because I said the same thing. She said it's funny when people who know nothing about the MJ case decided to comment on it. They now think that Branka was a legal attorney. Meanwhile, all he did was music was make music deals, and is perhaps guilty of accomplice to murder at most at least pretend you're smart wow well you know <laughs> I, I don't even know what to say to that i mean shout outs to whoever said that um and uh i know karen Faye says something i want to i want to look at what she said okay here we go so karen Faye, which most of you guys know she is but let's say for the casuals who don't know Karen Faye was Michael Jackson's longtime hairstylist, makeup, you know, co she basically, she handled Michael Jackson's cosmetics since, you know, Thriller, you know, since like the, you know, early mid eighties, pretty much basically for a very long time, you know, she was around him. So, and if she's saying something, I mean, not to say that, like, I'm just going to agree with it just because of who, who she is, but you got to keep in mind, like people who actually knew him, they kind of, you know, at least they know what they're talking about, you know. So there, there has to be some credence to what she's saying. So Karen Faye said, MJ explained to me the reason he was so angry with Branka was because Branka was working more on behalf for Sony than for him. Hmm. MJ told me Branka was forging and rewriting contracts that tied Michael Jackson to Sony when he wanted to leave and end his relationship with Sony. I need to take a sip of water for this. All right, if this shit is true, 
I feel so I feel so sorry for Michael. If this is true, you know, because we all know that one of the biggest issues with Michael Jackson personally was that he was surrounded with people that mostly surrounded with people that can only really see him as a dollar sign. They can only see him as Michael Jackson, the entertainer, the artist, the business, you know, a way to make money for themselves, a way to capitalize. And for him to have somebody like that who was quietly working against him. And the thing is, I wouldn't be surprised because y'all got to keep in mind, like when you're dealing with millions of dollars, like, like the game changes at that point. And people are going to do whatever it is they feel they need to do to try to secure the bag for themselves and for people that are going to keep securing the bag for them. So people that they benefit from monetarily. So I'm not surprised that Michael was trying to get, you know, find his way out of his deal with Sony. And then somebody else was trying to keep him in there because again, Michael Jackson is like damn near like generates the most money you know out of all artists ever you know what i'm saying so so i'm not surprised at that and again i if this is true i don't know but if this is true i feel so sorry for michael that somebody like that is in charge of his whole estate you know what i'm saying so that's just mind you I had all that to say and this is just the first tweet that i that i that i um read but shout outs to karen Faye. she said michael demanded all his documents from Branca when Michael Jackson fired him, when MJ fired him. Yet Branca came up with MJ's will and trust after MJ passed. Branca wrote the old will and made himself executor of it. Sony finally has Michael's catalogs thanks to Branca. Yo, yo, like I said, it's chess moves when you're dealing with tens of millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars potentially billions of dollars it's chess and again people are going to do whatever it is they need to do to secure the bag for themselves i ain't even gonna front i seen you know john branco with the little you know supermodel chick you know all out with her with the ferraris and all that shit so again i i cannot confirm nor deny but i would not be surprised i would not be surprised if this is a shit that was going on and if you ever read the 48 laws of power this is a fact Okay, this is a fact. Like life, you know, you don't even have to be rich D in relationships with people. It's smoke and mirrors. And with Michael, it was a lot of smoke and mirrors around him. And I wouldn't be surprised if one of his, you know, greatest enemies was right by him. Again, I don't know. I'm just, you know, putting myself in his shoes and I'm just, you know, thinking from that aspect. But let's continue. Randy Phillips and AEG brought Branka in. They were also threatening to pull the plug and take everything from MJ, even his children. If Michael did not perform, uh, if Michael did not perform, I saw Branka show up at a rehearsal. Before I knew it, Michael passed away and Branka was on vacation. Shout out to Karen Faye. You know that that's all I can say. You know I I I really appreciate people that they keep it real and they don't have a filter when it comes to the truth you know and the truth always gonna be what it is and again i think for karen Faye to have been around michael jackson for as long as she's been around him and for them to have the relationship that they had in a sense that she was always there so that's like if i have a barber that is cutting my hair you know twice a week always there with me on tour traveling all the time eventually we're going to build a relationship especially like and, and like anybody who's ever been in a barber's chair like you talk to your barber okay needless to say about a hairstylist who's not only doing helping doing your hair but she's also doing your makeup and covering parts of you that the public don't don't even see you know and and so it was a certain openness that i believe that they had in their relationship so again like i can't confirm nor deny but like i said again you know, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, and I wish I was, you know, Michael's friend, honestly. Like, I feel like if anybody could have been Michael's friend and pointed out certain shit, it would have been me. I would have been like, yo, Michael, nah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nah. But anyway, let's continue. She said, none of this is new information. It's just an explanation why I can never support anything that the estate is involved in. For me, it would be a betrayal. I don't blame her. I don't blame her. Like I said, when you know somebody like it, it's just different so and you know us as fans we're not on the same playing field as people who are friends with him 
Like people who got to spend that much time around him, people who got to have those regular conversations. The whole purpose of this biopic anyway is for us to get more of a glimpse into that, into those experiences that she had firsthand. So I'm not mad at her. You know, I'm not, I can't totally disparage what she's saying, even if I didn't agree or if I believed 100% what she's saying is just because, yo, like I'm not in that echelon, you know, and I'd be overstepping my place as a fan and what I like to call myself as a student of Michael Jackson because, you know, I wouldn't be who I am today if it wasn't for him, but I know my place. So I'm not going to attack her just because I want to go see it. And I don't think other fans should attack her either. You know, I don't think, you know, Michael would have wanted that basically. But anyway, let's, let's go on. We all witnessed Michael's disdain for Sony. Michael was so thrilled when he believed his contract was over with Sony. I am sure the movie, oh, okay, okay, wait. We all witnessed Michael's disdain for Sony. Michael was so thrilled when he believed his contract was over with Sony. Yeah, I believe it. You know, and one thing that I noticed was like, honestly, I think it was a mistake. You know, back in, what was it, 1991? When I think they, either, either 1991, I think when he like signed a new contract with Sony. Because I know it wasn't CBS anymore. And um, I think either, I think... Basically, he negotiated a deal with them between 1990 and like 94, 95 um, in order to kind of like subsidize a lot of the stuff that was going on where he brought them in. So it went from ATV to Sony ATV. I think that was one of the biggest mistakes Michael Jackson ever made, you know, was roping himself back in. And honestly, I just feel like shit, like he should have went independent if he could have you know like for all the business ventures that michael you know was into and things that he was trying to establish i would have just tried to do everything myself but then again that probably would have you know put a bigger target on michael jackson's back because then he would have revolutionized the industry again if he had made a move like that you know obviously it would have made things a lot harder but he would have been able to forego a lot of shit that came with roping himself up with, with sony who didn't even promote, you know, his his last album, right? You know, because we all know Invincible was supposed to be different than what it was, and then they were the ones who were who were screwing him over. So, um, and she says, I'm sure the movie will end before they get into the truth and all of the false allegations and issues that led to MJ's pain and death. Hold on, let me reread that. She, she said, I'm sure the movie will end before they get into the truth. And all of the false allegations. Okay, 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 I get it. So basically she's saying like they probably won't even get into it. You know, it won't even really. And if I'm using the right word, which I'm pretty sure I am. But it won't even really like partially vindicate, you know, Michael Jackson in terms of like public perception and whatever the truth is. You know, and, and, and I hope not. I hope not. You know, I, I, I believe based on the verbiage and who she is, I believe that, you know, her issues are genuine. I'm going to still go see it anyway. But, um, but I don't think people should be arguing about that. If you want to go see the movie, go see the movie. If you don't want to go see it, you don't have to go see it. There's a lot of movies that come out every day that I don't want to see. So I just don't see them. I didn't even watch, you know, the damn trailers. Like I love Avatar, the last airbender. They're doing a live action remake for Netflix. I knew it was a bad idea from jump. I'm not going to go see it. I didn't even watch the trailer. So if that's how you feel, then just, you know, do what you do, what you do or do what you don't feel. You know, but there's no need to argue about it because we all we all have love for the same, you know, man at the end of the day. So, you know, we all need to come together. That's what we need to do. But and lastly, she says, will this be a cover up piece for history like the This Is It movie protecting the guilty? We will see. I am hoping for an honest movie. Me too. Me too, Miss Faye. Me too. Um, and. I think maybe there might be one piece that I am going to read um, uh, real quick. Uh, here we go. So shout outs to Chantal Obrist, who I know her from, you know, stuff that was going on with that fake ass Michael Jackson channel that makes a ton of money every month uh, using exploitative, you know, content and stuff like that talking about uh, uh, who's the brokest Jackson family member or the truth between Randy Jackson and Michael Jackson. We all know who I'm talking about and I'm not even gonna mention you know, that channel's actual title name or whatever. But she said, 
since the announcement of the name of the actor who will play John Branca, MJ Fam is exploding on social media, especially Twitter. I totally get everyone's sentiment about Branca, but to go on Twitter or any other social social media platform and say we are not supporting the biopic is not smart. Do whatever you want, but don't start bashing the biopic, please. We need the biopic to succeed. This is so important. Much more than our personal feelings on the narrative of Branca's impact. Sometimes I don't understand why we ourselves, who fought for five years, do not understand when it when it is important to play the game right. Jafar and Prince Jackson and many others would not be all in on this project if it was not executed right. Since it needed the approval of the estate, we may not be happy with the narrative in which the biopic will portray Branca's relevancy and impact in MJ's life though. I am surprised this comes as a surprise to anyone to be honest, but please be smart and still support the project. Because if the biopic doesn't perform well, which I doubt, that will be a massive damage to his legacy going forward. Which, I mean, that part I definitely agree on for sure. Please be supportive when talking about it on social media, in the open space especially. If any one of you did tweet or post anything to say they are not supporting this project, please consider deleting your tweet post for Michael's legacy. Now, what she said, shout out to you, Chantel, if you're watching this. Um, what she said comes from a good place. Um, and I, I, I agree with most of it. The only thing is, you know, the only thing that I will just say is that, like, people are going to do what do and say whatever it is that they want to say. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I even, even though I don't agree with what people say, unless it's on my channel where I could delete and block what they say and it's on my personal platform, it's like I can't really control what people say at the end of the day. You know, so if people are stirred emotionally to the point where they're voicing their, you know, uh, lack of support for the biopic, I mean, then that's on them. Because I think at the end of the day, we're going to make up a, a, a good chunk, like a, a good chunk, like a, a, a solid, I, 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 dare I say the majority of the viewership or the turnout that's going to come to see the biopic. Um, but casuals are going to go see this shit too so i think regardless if whether or not certain fans go see it people are still going to go out to see what this movie is going to be this movie is still going to like have a good turnout just based off of the name alone which is michael jackson so if they do their thing with the trailer then you know people are going to show up so anyway like i was saying because my freaking you know camera uh my camera ran out of space you know i need a new sd card you know Y'all seeing all this shit live. But, um, yeah, so, at the end of the day, like, you, you can't force people to be on one accord with you at the end of the day. Like, you know, me, I think me being a fan, honestly, is like like an isolated thing for me. If, if I wanted everybody to be on the same page with me, I would probably drive, you know, myself crazy. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I just say, if you want to see it, keep showing love to the project, keep supporting it, all of that. If you don't want to see it, then, you know, don't see it. If that's what you feel like saying, I mean, everybody's grown. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if this is on, like, my YouTube channel or my page or my vicinity, then I could control that. But it's like, you can only control what you can control. And it's only going to drive yourself crazy when you try to, you know, get people to, um, you know, be on the same page. So, and, and Michael Jackson fans... It's just like it's it's such a diverse fan base that I think it, it'd be damn near impossible for everybody to be on the same page as it relates to, you know, different things that take place in this, you know, fan community and shit like that. So, um, but, um, yeah. So anyway, th those are pretty much those are pretty much my thoughts on miles teller and john branca and boycotting the film or not boycotting it and all of that so you know y'all could always you know count on me to keep it real you know and just to be like how should i say i didn't even know the word but i'm just i'm gonna always keep this shit real you know whatever it is and then let's say if i didn't you know like the film for some reason i would probably say it I probably would and you know no one could tell me not to because you know it is what it is but again like me i if you couldn't tell already you know i have um like a whole lot of love for michael jackson you know what i'm saying so it's just like um 
yeah, I mean, that's just where I'm at. That, that's where I've always been. And that's where I'm going to be. And whatever it is that I say is going to operate from a place of love for Michael Jackson. And I can't say that other people aren't doing the same because, you know, we're all fans at the end of the day. So um, with that said, please be sure as always to like, comment, subscribe, check out my other content on the channel. And uh, I will see you on the next one. Peace. Good luck.